Cool. <clears throat> okay, um, hello everyone. It's really good to be here. Um, my first time at Academy, so I've got a lot of stuff. Some of this is kind of focusing on there and some of it goes into the technical details about the SDK that we're working on. I'll try and rush through the first bit so we've got a bit more time on the tech stuff. So the title, some, some people have said this is a bit provocative, but um, you know, in some ways, Migo did not succeed. Right now, it's dead. I know I helped turn off the infrastructure. But in a lot of ways, it really did do quite a lot of good. You know, so we do owe Intel and Nokia uh, a serious amount of thanks for putting a lot of money and a lot of effort in, bringing the awareness of this stuff up in, in the general environment. Um, but this is now the story of what's kind of happened after the big guns left. Um, do a bit of talk on the history, and then, like I say, hopefully go a bit more into the uh, SDK. And we're really proud of what's happened. Um, we've got Yoro and Sailfish with the first mobile device. We've got Vivaldi doing the uh, tablet with Plasma Active. Um, we've got Nomovoc doing IVI, and people like uh, Mika Bostrom have been helping us with Qt5 packaging porting. Uh, we've got Inspirata, and they're doing uh, kind of stuff in the development uh, in the embedded space. Uh, we're working with Digia, ICS, and we're really quite proud of everything that's been coming together around the whole Mare environment and we want more people to do it. So really, what, what, are, we, what are we talking about? Microphone. Hmm. Uh, phones, of course, but tablets, televisions, cars, um, QT has got a thing for fridges. So really, it, it's absolutely anything. Um, and when you've got things like uh, the Raspberry Pi at the, the retail price that that is, innovation and the ability to use that even in small businesses for prototyping is really a very real uh, opportunity. So really, we're, we're moving heavily into the embedded space, and we're doing it with Qt and Qt-based frameworks. So a little history. Um, MIMO, in around 2009, was running, and Nokia were making a lot of progress there. Um, Carsten Monk started a project to kind of open it up a little and, and show what we could do in the, in the open source community. And we got quite a long way with that. We got some tablets uh, that we got working and, and little bits of kit. And then Moblin was also coming at the same time with this strange C-based framework. Um, and then we had Migo suddenly come on the scene, and that was the RPM-based solution. But you know, this wasn't important to us. What it was was a focus on, on Qt, uh, and that was something that we found was really what we wanted to get done. So we, we looked at this, and we kind of took our attentions away from MIMO and onto and the Mare version there and onto Migo. Anyway. Things kind of didn't go so well in the end, um, and really, that's where we move on from. We'd already looked at what Migo was doing. We'd already said, guys, there are things you're doing here that aren't quite right. We think Migo should be a little bit more broken up. Um, we should be able to focus on different areas of it, rather than having a big monolithic delivery. So we were, we were putting forward a proposition which essentially said, we should focus on vendors. We should focus on people that want to make devices. Um, now, Intel and Samsung, unknown to us, were kind of having a little chat, and all of a sudden, Tizen sprang up. But we didn't really care, we did it anyway. So, Mayor started. Have I missed a slide here? No. Um, and it had pretty good success at attracting the vendor interest from the Migo concept, which was really good. Um, and we kind of said, okay, well, what else do we need to do? Quality is an important part of Mare. Uh, we want processes, we want to be able to test um, different approaches to work, but we want to be able mo mainly to see small businesses take a, a device and really be able to use Mare to make us a, a, a product and a specific UX. And of course, larger businesses, we, we should be able to make a fully fledged smartphone UI, and that's a pretty sophisticated uh, interface. What is Mare not, though? Um, I say it's not a user experience, but that's not really true. We do have a UX, um, and basically it's a splash screen that exercises some GLES. Um, but really, that, that's, that's, a, that's a true statement. We don't have a, a user environment for it. What we are doing is focusing on getting Mare down to a small size. It's about 330 packages at the moment. Um, and, you know, Migo was up at about 1,500. Uh, Debian, you need a new numbering system to count their packages. So if you're going to be building a device and putting a product out there, it's important to make sure that you don't have that much stuff that you need to QA or handle. 
you don't get many choices. We use system D, we use various other bits of uh, capability, but you are free to change and free to choose. Plasma Active use Network Manager um, and rather than Conman, which we use in the core. So it still offers this entire uh, open source choice and collaboration capability. And yeah, we've, we've done a lot of delivery. There's, there's some examples here of where we've actually had quite a variety of success. Lots and lots of different porting packages that are going on. And some stuff that we don't know about because organizations are developing their own ports on hardware that we're not aware of. So the whole point of this is to say that this is not necessarily about us as developers. It's really about our management. Um, we need to be able to persuade management that this is a good choice for us. This is the right kind of technology. And these, these are some of the key things that they're going to want to, to um, have good answers to, along with some of the issues around risk. But there's no consortium or association. There's no big annual fees. Um, the joining process is you kind of come to the IRC channel and say, hi, can I, uh, can I do some stuff with Mayor? And we welcome you in. And getting this done, the, the most important bit about this is we're pragmatic. We've got to focus. Um, and I think that's obvious. The second part of this is about saying this is how we plan to retain that integrity. We're using well-established open source organizational principles. Um, so we don't think we're going to have problems with being told what to do by management. Um, we don't have much management. But we do, uh, as I say, our focus is on working with commercial organizations. We want to make this uh, something that people can use to, to build things. And Yola have worked with us, and they've decided to form Sailfish around, um, around their community. And Mare is a, is a core part of it. Um, there's a commercial ecosystem around Mare and the tools and the systems. And they'll be offering additional capabilities. But the point here is that we're the open source project at the heart of it. And I think we can view this in the same way that you look at the relationship between Qt and KDE and you know, ICS, Digia, KDAB, and, and other kind of the commercial organizations in the environment. So I mentioned tools and systems. Um, I, I like to say that code is not enough. It's absolutely great, but being given a code dump is not a good way to start a team working. Um, and whilst it's massively important, we also want systems. Uh, we want the best practices, and we want documentation to kind of explain how to get all this stuff used. So yeah, we, we do have a whole load of stuff in core. We've got a, a, a decent architecture. Um, the things that you'd expect, and our fundamental approach is to say, okay, this drives a Qt-based environment. This is all the stuff. And pretty much, it's the minimal set of stuff that we feel in modern Linux distributions that you need to get Qt running. But we do have other capabilities, other services that we offer. Um, our build system is OBS. Um, it's a little like Jenkins, but operates in a slightly different paradigm. Um, it allows us to have team building but with projects and processes that we put in place around how, how code flows from one developmental phase to another. Um, I think a lot of KDE users are familiar with it already from the OpenSUSE imp imp installation of OBS. We've got BOSS. I mentioned processes. We do a lot of automation. There are too few of us to actually do all this stuff manually. So we've written some process automation, not just state stuff, but proper business process automation. And we're working with some fairly interesting tooling in the uh, cross-compilation space, Scratchbox 2, which I wish they hadn't called it Scratchbox, but um, it is a very, very competent cross-compilation environment. We really like it and we really did not like Scratchbox 1. Um, all kinds of other bits, image building capabilities, uh, Bugzilla integration. A lot of what we're trying to do here is to work with organizations that need to take a lot of these services and deploy them internally. So we're not, we are using GitHub, but we're not just using GitHub. We're gonna have GitLab as our own Git repo. We also are working, because of YOLO, with other people in the Chinese community. And we've got issues with GitLab, uh, sorry, GitHub being blocked from China. So there are things like that where it's beneficial for us to have our own Git management. Okay, um, Libhybris. Can't mention Mare without talking about this. Uh, we were 
in Finland drinking quite a bit. Um, and we were talking, um, and it was like, well, you know, okay, so you've got this glibc environment, um, and that's our application, and we've got these binary blobs that do this graphics acceleration, and they're built with Bionic. And you're telling me you can't link them, like seriously? So um, that, was the, that was the premise, and we kind of chatted about how that should be done, and we decided not to do it through, um, through Dbus or anything like that. Um, but we decided eventually to, to, well, Karsten really did the engineering on this. Um, and he got it working. It's now working very, very effectively. Um, I think, you know, Canonical have gone and got some devices out there using LibHybris, and they're now contributing back to it. And of course, we're using the same technology. Um, so you dynamically load Android uh, drivers and glibc applications, which basically means that if you're a small business, you go buy an Android baseboard, and you can run Qt-based applications on top of it. And that, that extends through the, through the driver stack, so you can run that with modems and the like as well. But moving on, I said I'd try and talk to the SDK as soon as I could. Um, the objectives of our SDK are to provide a quite wide-ranging ease of use. Um, so we've got people who are doing app development, um, and they're doing that on multiple platforms. So we've got Windows users, Mac, uh, OS X users, as well as the entire Linux environment. Um, and as well as the kind of like small app developer people who are developing things for the, for the phone, we've got full-scale UI developers as well. We've got people who want to be able to use uh, low-level platform development. And of course, we've got our partners and organizations that, that are, that mares customers will want their partners to work with. And they could be using closed code and things like that. Um, so we, do, we have all these objectives, but we want to be compatible with the fundamental Linux developmental style. We want to do things the cute way. So Sailfish and Yola have really driven and sponsored a lot of this work. Um, it's all done pretty much in the open, although I admit we probably talk too much on closed channels because of our commercial discussions as well. Um, but they have kind of set the framework out for, for the work that we're doing. And it's about starting off with something we put together in the mayor environment, which was our platform SDK. And that was, that was okay, uh, you wanna help us do some work on mayor, what you need to be able to do is build our packages. So rather than port our tools to every single distro out there, we thought, mm, you know, what we really want to do is use Linux containers, uh, by which I mean a chroot, but, you know, it could be better in the future. It will be. Um, so you put, you put all our mayor distro into a container, and all of a sudden we're, we've got, we're a self-hosting platform that's also got an awful lot of uh, deployment capability. We use, as I say, chroot, but LXC and VirtualBox are other uh, containers. And you can kind of see where I'm going with this with the multi-platform support. So this whole run anywhere stuff then gives us a platform SDK that does things like uh, work on the middleware and the low level. You want to build a kernel, you want to go in and play with systemd, or you want to do some GStreamer work. You'll be using your own editors and you'll be using a platform SDK. Then you want to go and build an image. So we've got our local image building tools and, and that kind of stuff. Um, test tools, the ability to kind of run the automation tests and submit back to our QA systems. OBS for talking to the, the build systems and that kind of thing. The cross compilation so that you're in your Chiroot and you want to build a MIPS version of your code. You just download the MIPS environment, put a MIPS target in place and, and you're doing that. So this platform SDK is a very important low level uh, piece of the puzzle. But we also need the higher level piece. And this is where we're working with Digger on this, and we're, we're going to get it upstreamed, he says, looking for Ari, uh, aren't we? So there's, there's some discussions we need to have there because this is not standard. This is not your normal way of building stuff on a Linux environment. So we do have to kind of come and talk to the cute community and say, look, this is what we're trying to do. We're going to try and do it the best we can. Help us to get this upstream and supported as part of Mayor's open source kind of uh, work. And what this selfish, um, sorry, what this plugin, look at my slide here, 
what this plugin does is it says it needs to control the platform SDK. It needs to control the containered build engine, um, in this case in VirtualBox. And that means stop and start it, that kind of stuff. It needs to detect uh, the targets. I mentioned you could kind of put together a MIPS target or an ARM target or an x86 target. So they need to be detected and put into kits. We need to control emulators because uh, a lot, uh, and devices. A, to we, a lot of what we need to do is to be able to build this stuff in, in Qt Creator and deploy it and see it run either on an emulator if you've not got a device or on a real device. We need to handle um, packaging metadata. So basically, for, uh, for an open source environment, if, if you remember Apps for Migo and our community app store, We'll have that kind of stuff for the Nemo environment that we're, we're working with as a partner in there as well. But people like Yola and other organizations will want to package their applications for their own store. So we need to manage packaging metadata. We need to handle things that are simple update notifications. Um, we've tried to abstract a lot of the mere specific stuff into this build engine. So we just provide a little WebKit view onto the build engine and we can use a web app to manage a lot of the stuff internally. Um, we also want to do things with the installer and allow people to do easy setups. It's a very nice experience. And I hope actually a lot of people might have tried to download our, our alpha installer that we did with Yola. So yeah, there are some differences to how we do things, but uh, I've got as a kind of a design principle to try and do things the, the cute way um, when we're kind of moving forward. And really, that's the point. You put these two points together, these two things together, and you end up with the Mare SDK. Um, and this is, this is a starting point for a, uh, an SDK that can be used by our vendors. And that's what happened with, <coughs> with uh, Yola. They have added Yola-specific targets and a Yola-specific emulator, and now you've got a Sailfish SDK. And this is all about building on the kind of the core open components that are in there and how we can actually make this work for different vendors. Yola and their selfish proposition have a, you know, if I put a, put a different hat on here, their proposition is that they can work with vendors too and share this technology and license it to save them the bother of having to manage it. So we work on both sides of that proposition. And this is because we've designed it to be extensible. Um, this whole, yeah, I want to add a target, you know, if I've got a MIPS device or a, an ARM device, I add a MIPS or an ARM target, um, and then I run directly against a device. If I've got an emulator, it's gonna be an x86 target. If it's running a different version of uh, the distro, it runs a different version of the target. And of course, because we've got this virtualization capability, and because Mare is so plat portable across platforms, anybody working with a Mare platform, even if they're fundamentally focusing on a non-x86 uh, architecture, can just put together an emulator in VirtualBox and run it. Um, so yeah, this, this is supposed to, I'm gonna go a little bit more into the details of how this actually works. Um, and this is supposed to show how things put together, uh, are put together from the build perspective. You've got Qt Creator running natively on the host. You've got uh, your code sitting there on the host. And then you've got a contained environment, which is a virtual box thing, which has got your, your tools inside. You know, all the gearing happens here. And that's kind of interesting too, because you know what? The source, the, the, the binaries that are running in there the, the build binaries, they're the exact same tool chain, the exact same binaries that run up on our OBS systems or any of our development platform SDKs. So even if you're running on a Windows host, you're running the same version of GCC. So from a QA point of view, this stuff's kind of nicely consistent in many ways. But there are a few costs in terms of the routing of various bits that we'll get onto. So the code sharing bit, is done through shared folders. Uh, and that was one of our choices for reasons for choosing uh, VirtualBox. It's not perfect, and we've had to do some work on the kernel modules. Um, a guy called Richard Brackman has saved my life on multiple occasions by fixing stupid problems in the, um, in the VirtualBox shared folder modules. All 
client side, so we don't worry about what's running on Windows, we just manage the, uh, the engine side. Um, and what happens is it, it essentially, when you tell Qt Creator to do a make, it runs an SSH command into the virtual, bo into the virtual box machine and runs make against that shared folder. When you do it, tell it to do QMake, all the rest of it, it just does that for you. There's some clever stuff that we're also doing to make this really consistent with packaging, but I'll go into that some other time or if there are any questions. So that's not that complicated, really. You know, you press make and it runs GCC. We, we kind of like this. Um, and the next step is really to say, okay, well, if we change that gearing, I should have another slide, but I've, I, lost the, uh, I lost the picture, so I didn't edit it. Imagine another slide where instead of gears, that's got a nice little graphical UI, and we've got the same basic um, setup. You've got an emulator running, and it also has some shared folders if they're needed, um, but it can talk to the build engine. So we've now got the ability to deploy. Well, you know what? If you're writing a really big piece of code, what you don't want to have to do is package the whole damn lot up, put it into an RPM or something, copy it over to the device, and uninstall it. It'd be really nice if you could just rsync it. Well, guess what? Because this is just a to root in an environment, we've got rsync available. The device is running there too. That's got rsync. So yeah, okay. Now what we do is we just we deploy via rsync. It's great. It works on Windows too. It works on Mac. Um, you know, we don't have. We, we've got a lot of capability with this. Um, and I don't think I mentioned, I was going to try and run it, but I've not got, not got time really. Uh, the emulator that we're working on is, uh, the, the YOLO one, is now running Qt5 on Wayland in VirtualBox. So we've got a, a Qt5 environment because we've got a Qt5 target. But you know what? If you get the Qt4 target, we can support that at the same time. Okay? So we've got this, this huge amount of flexibility that this virtualization stuff gives us and this, this separation of the targets as well. Okay, um, moving on. What, what are we kind of looking at in the future? Um, it's already there in many ways, but I'm, I'm looking at a concept which I call providers, which is to say that the SDK sits there. We've got, um, we've got a build engine and it needs emulators and it needs uh, targets. So a provider is a web URL that lets me download emulators and targets. And the Nemo project, for example, <coughs> our, our open source mobile phone development environment that came through from Nego and is still going strong, could be a community provider of targets and emulators. If you want to run Mare on a, a you know, Raspberry Pi, you can do that, and that can be a provider. Plasma Active can be a provider and say, okay, download a Plasma Active tarball, and that's simply the root, the target. Here's a Plasma Active uh, VDI. You've now got an emulator. All of a sudden, the ease of entry into this environment is a lot better. The App Store story for these environments is better. We want to do better emulator support, um, so a little better integration. Uh, we want to improve low-level uh, sim uh, simulation on the emulator. And we've got things that we're working on there that go through both the Qt simulation framework, but also, now we've got an emulator, we can play with the kernel there and start doing low-level in, uh, low um, injection of events into the kernel, which then propagate up um, as if you had hardware on the device. And we want to get the Qt creator or something to have a, a, a wrapper around it. Um, we want better support for, for cross-tooling. Uh, um, I, I mentioned I want to do some work on the container because best will in the world, there's not many developers are gonna use VirtualBox on Linux to compile things. That's not really what they wanna do. They wanna use LXC. I've already got two-rooted uh, environments with namespacing and such like enabled, so we can do that. LXC is probably the best bet because it won't collide and you can still run an emulator in VirtualBox. KVM and VirtualBox don't play together well. Um, the debugger, debugging's kind of hard um, because if you're going to run Qt Creator on a Windows host, trying to get debugger running on a virtual build uh, virtual um, machine, talking through to a 
device which is running a GDB server and you then try and send it a signal. Uh, weird things happen, as I got informed this week. So we need to kind of review what we're doing from debugger support. Maybe, maybe even take a look at whether we need to go through the uh, build engine to do debugging. Um, I want to because I think trying to build MIPS debuggers, cross debuggers inside Windows is not a good solution. Um, okay, so yeah, th that's, that's kind of some of the immediate stuff that I'm looking at for the, for the, for the next few weeks and months. Um, but I suppose the call to action, the, um, we actually need, we need help on this. We need, uh, we, we talk about things being a, a vendor community. Um, and I actually like to get people to use the word cooperative when they're talking to management in this space because it gives people a kind of an economic model that they can latch onto and say, actually, this is where you're supposed to come in and take part. And we can also justify that and say that, you know, um, when you're taking part, you are influencing the direction of this. Because the question is, what, why on earth would you bother with Mare? You've got Windows, you've got iOS, you've got Android, you've got Tizen. So in the room, I think it's pretty damned obvious why you'd bother with Mare. Um, but it needs to be explained. You know, if you go to iOS, you just can't have it go away. If you go to Windows, you can have it. We'll throw it out the, over the fence with you and license it and change it and do what we like with it when we like. So there is, there is a model there, but it may not give you the freedom of choice over the direction of the platform that you want. Android's actually remarkably similar. Um, I wonder how many people have ever gotten their patches into Android. It's not easy to go and say, okay, let's influence the direction of where this platform is going. Migo had that as the core of its proposition. Um, and in fact, to some degree, Tizen had it too, but Migo was not the most open environment to actually get involved with, and Tizen even less so. So the mayor proposition is something that we think is, is really good for a collaborative and cooperative approach, and that's really appealing to certainly smaller device vendors. Um, anyway, on a, more, on a more direct call to action, uh, I need help with Qt Creator. I really do need to make sure that we get this plugin um, to fit into the architecture around Qt. I need to make sure that people tell me as soon as possible about any problems we're having that, ooh, you shouldn't be doing it like that or that kind of thing. Okay, um, so come and talk to us. I'm David Greaves, I'm LBT on IRC, and we hang out in a fair number of channels because of our partners, um, and there's the Mayor Project. Uh, any questions? Um, we run, so the question is, do we run make in the virtual box and is that a huge overhead? Um, I think one of the key things here is it depends on your definition of huge. Um, it really does, because is it an overhead? Absolutely, yes. Is it a huge overhead? No, not really. Um, if you actually look at the day-to-day -day activity of running make, the amount of time that you lose for, say, a, a, a GCC compile is quite small. You all allocate multiple cores to the virtual box machine, and it runs pretty quickly. You allocate it a chunk of memory. And bearing in mind that you're asking this question today, if you were asking this question in six months, you'd be running on Windows. Because in six months, I would hope that we'd gone further with things like LXC as a container in the, win in the Linux environment. So then the, the overhead has got to be measured about the fact that you're running the same version of GCC rather than something that's been recompiled to work under some environment under Windows. Okay, so the second question in there is how, how is that working when it's doing cross-compilation? Scratchbox 2 does low-level system call intercept and translation, okay? So when you open a file, it looks at the file it's trying to open and intercepts the path. When you open, 
If you log into um, the target, which is an ARM binary target, it will be using Chemu to emulate. When you open GCC, we intercept that file, we see, it's a, an, uh, we see it's GCC, and we redirect it to a native GCC, which is a cross-compile. And that uses native Excel, well, a, a native binary to do a cross-compile. We don't call it by its cross-compile name. You just call GCC. So you can't almost, you, you, it feels like you're running on a native ARM environment, but we're doing this acceleration. And we've done a huge amount of work to accelerate things and some tricks to pick up, you know, there are some damned awkward build systems that insist on building tools like QMake halfway through and then using them, which is great fun under ARM. Um, but we've got around that and we've accelerated that too. Any more questions? Yes. I don't know. We have a task at the minute to get up to date with the latest Linaro one. So I think, are we on 4.6 and we should be on 4.7? If you want to help, where are you? What version of GCC are we on at the moment? And you're going to help us get to 4.7? Yep, thank you. They're going to help us get to 4.7. <laughs> so, uh, any other questions? Yes. Um, way back, I said we talked to Migo and said, guys, when you do a release, you're holding up the release of everything because, you know, the background's blue and you want it to be green on the UX side of things. So what we've done is we've broken Mare down into a number of projects. Um, Mare Core contains everything that you'd pretty much want to put on a device. And by the way, that's GPL 2, not 3, because we think that vendors are scared of it, not because we're scared of it. One of the other things we've done is broken out Mare Tools. So we have a different uh, environment for Mare Tools. And Mare Tools contains the stuff you want in your SDK or the stuff that you might want to put onto a device for, um, for debugging. So yeah, uh, I'm not going to try and pull it up right now, but things that I remember, LA Trace, Valgrind, <sighs> There's just a list of them, and basically anything you want. It's a pretty standard environment, so you just port it. And what I typically do is go grab the OpenSUSE or Fedora RPM, look at that, and use that as a basis for packaging it, and then we package. Any more questions? Anything on the Qt side or Qt Creator? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>